Mary Meet, Annie here. It's nice to see you this evening. It's a beautiful day here. Beautiful in a strange way because it is overcast and rainy and cool. Not cold like some of you are experiencing, but cool enough to bring out leggings and a long sleeve shirt for the first time since, I guess, April. And it's a real taste of ending, the ending of summer and beginning of fall. And it felt really good today to be cuddling under blankets and using the dogs to keep warm. It was nice to have them in our laps and to um, have long sleeves on and a real good feeling of the shifting of the seasons. I spent some time, it was the kind of day where you read and you write and journal and just relax. And I spent some time on YouTube looking at videos and learning a little bit more about the pagan community here on YouTube. And I saw a lot of videos, and it seems like a really, really high percentage of videos that our pagan brothers and sisters post with what many seem to perceive as a hot topic of solitary versus coven practice. And I found it a little fascinating and spent some time looking at a lot of videos today. And it's interesting how powerfully we sometimes need to defend our stand on something when our stand is perfectly true and so is someone else's and it's, it's interesting to see some of the kind of conversations that come back and forth. And this one intrigued me today because I actually spent time just looking at videos on this particular subject. And I kept thinking of a woman's... If I keep looking down it's because Ernie, the French Bulldog, is in my lap and needing to have his head scratched, so he's asking for a little attention. Anyway, today as I was reading these videos and seeing some defensive posturing and some loving posturing, seeing a little bit of everything, I was thinking of woman's chant from Women's Circles, that part of it goes, Blessed be and blessed are the ones who dance together, and blessed be and blessed are the ones who dance alone. And I was thinking about people I hope will become new friends on YouTube, and how we each practice very differently and come from so many paths. And in fact, even when we label ourselves or name ourselves a path, we often find out that we still have an awful lot different and well in addition to what we have in common. And this solitary coven discussion, it was an interesting one to spend the day with. Now I prefer to be covened, have been involved in circles all of my adult life and need that. I'm a traditional Wiccan, which means that the religion to me is a religion of community of coming together to create magic and raise power together of the family and the kinship that's part of the circle and the work that's done in circle. And there are very specific tenets to the religion of Wicca as I practice it. However, as I mentioned in another video, when the time came in my life that I was between circles, and for no bad reason, just because things end and people move on and it ended up that I found myself not just with a short-handed coven, but actually one that disbanded, and I was the only one still living in the same state. Everybody else moved away. And there I was, and had to stop and think about practicing alone in a formal sense, and realized that there was a different experience of my spirituality that I needed to explore, and it was the part that was separate from any relationship to a group. It doesn't change my preference to be involved in the formal tradition of Wicca, which works in circles, but it doesn't limit my experience as a solitary, because I was thinking as I was looking at everyone's videos that, you know, we really all are, all are solitary, in the sense that what it means at our deepest spiritual level, what our relationship to the divine is, how we live our spirituality in our day-to-day -day lives, how we meditate, how we pray, 
I was thinking a friend of mine's going through difficult times right now and she mentioned months back when she was going through another rough patch in her life and one of her loved ones passed over and she said that the test of your spirituality, of determining if you've moved away, for instance, from traditions that may have been your family traditions to a new tradition that you have created or joined for yourself, that the test of that is when you're alone and you need to call out to some power that's greater than yourself, who do you call out to? So I was thinking of her today as she's lost yet another loved one, and I'm thinking that no matter how we practice in our formal sense, whether it's alone or whether it's in a group, we are truly practicing at that most intimate, solitary level when it comes to so many of the spiritual moments of our lives. And on YouTube, where I see that the majority of people that I will meet are practicing as solitaries, when I look at their videos and see how they've created that practice with artistry and poetry and creativity and invention of these wondrous ways to celebrate who they are spiritually, I'm finding that even though I'm someone who leads circles and is an elder in a circle and celebrate the formal tradition of Wicca in a communal sense, I'm finding a lot of similarity at that basic, deep spiritual level with those who are practicing alone. And also find some of their videos very inspiring because their insight, because they've always done it alone, and I have actually very rarely had to be totally on my own in my life. I met my first circle when I was in my early 20s. So it's a different experience of modern paganism than I experienced. Mine was communal right from the start. It was about tribe. So I'm really finding it fascinating to see these videos and see how people of all ages and experiences are creating this varied expression of neo-paganism. Very inspirational. But amongst that, the, the joy of seeing and being inspired by people who are creating these very interesting solo paths is that undercurrent on YouTube of defending a solitary way or a covened way as if one or the other is either defensible or preferable because it seems to me that we are every single one of us solitary. Our relationships to the divine are internal and intimate and solitary. And the way we choose to practice that, whether it's alone because we have not met others that we can celebrate with, or because we truly prefer to be celebrating alone, or whether we choose to celebrate in community. I just wish it weren't the distancing thing that it, it seems sometimes it's coming across as in videos that, or maybe I was just seeing that kind of cross-section of videos today. So I thought that was an interesting thing today, and I was realizing that I'm finding as much in common with people that I'm seeing on YouTube who celebrate alone and are truly inventing every step of the way as they develop and grow their own path, as I am finding things in common with the relatively few traditional sorts who follow a specified path with a prescribed way that celebrates communally. And I don't find any more or any less in common with what I might think would be my brothers and sisters in that sense than I do those who are celebrating alone. So I realized that at first I thought I had a non-opinion about this discussion that circles on out there about one versus the other. Even I, in the subject to this video, will put down solitary versus coveting only because it's common in the description of these videos, and if others are searching for the topic, maybe they'll stumble upon it. But even that sets up one as opposed to the other. And they're complementary to each other, I truly do believe. Only with the moments of one or the other believing they can judge the way of the other when they suddenly don't become complementary. So I realize I do have an opinion, not about the one or the other, but a strong opinion that it's all the same, and that it's what we make of it, 
And if we challenge each other in a posing or defensive or insecure manner over one way or the other, kind of in an overly defensive way, that perhaps then we need to question why we're uncomfortable with something that we feel we need to defend it so um, sharply at times. And I realize that actually that defending is a way of, especially for those who are young or new on the path, to be learning more about what they believe. The pendulum has to swing pretty wide sometimes to come back to whatever your personal centering place will be. So I found out that I actually have an opinion, and my opinion is, first a little bit of confusion about the hot topic, which didn't seem quite so hot to me, and as I read people's comments and saw videos, I could have a perception then of why to some it is, and a wish that those that one versus the other when it comes to solitary versus covened or group practice wouldn't feel as divisive as it seems to sometimes and maybe there will be shifts in the YouTube community the more we all get to know each other where it won't feel so divisive and we can all think about what we have in common. So those are my thoughts today and I journal journaled a little bit about them too because I thought um, it gave me some insights into my own thinking about even though I am with a circle now I have a very active role in that circle that I'm still as solitary as anyone who has never practiced in a circle and that was an interesting bit for me to journal for myself today so thank you YouTube for giving me some bread for thought today I hope this day is finding you all well and that you're enjoying the end of the weekend. Blessed be and blessed are the ones who dance together. Blessed be and blessed are the ones who dance alone.